Welcome back friends, uh, welcome to another video from Shomu's Biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about somatic embryogenesis. So you probably heard this name embryogenesis earlier, right? And you all know embryogenesis means the development of embryo after the fusion of two gametes together, right? That means the fusion of gametes will form a 2n number of nucleus containing cell that is known as a zygote and the zygote will divide and it will produce an embryo right the, that embryo will grow and divide and produce a mature organism that's the conventional plan of embryogenesis now what is somatic embryogenesis in normal embryogenesis as I told you we have two different cells both of them are in number of nucleus containing cells uh, hopefully one one male cell one female cell uh, I'm talking about plants here but also uh, I'm, I'm drawing it like like a sperm here but uh, it's whatever it is just to di differentiate between the male and female type okay and after the fusion it produces the 2n number of nucleus containing cell okay so that is known as zygote once the zygote is formed then the zygote will go and divide right the zygote will divide and differentiate and they will produce the mature embryo produce the mature embryo and that embryo can grow and ultimately give us the organism if we're talking about plants here it will give us plants okay this is the general embryogenesis or we known as a zygotic embryogenesis but uh, this, the term is somatic embryogenesis in this video so what is supposed to be somatic means you know there are two types of cells you know germline cells and somatic cells in our body germ cells are the cells this n number of nucleus containing cells haploid cells they are known as germ cells so the embryogenesis with the germ cell is known as zygotic embryogenesis but there are other cells in our body that construct our whole body that's known as somatic cells they are not the n or haploid they are diploid cells itself to n number of nucleus containing cells in our body all the rest of the cells that makes us who we are those are the somatic cells or normal body cells right 2n body cells so those are called the somatic cells so normally embryo is produced due to the fusion of two haploid cells or two gamete cells but in this case we will see embryo will produce from a somatic cell that is the difference between the conventional embryogenesis and the somatic embryogenesis. Now somatic embryogenesis can be achieved in plant cells very easily and once we achieve somatic embryogenesis we can grow the plant. We can grow the plant, we can produce artificial seeds and also we can go for some plants, let's say a plant gets infection due to some sort of reason. That infection, we cannot grow that plant. We cannot take up cells from that plant for tissue culture. So the easiest way in those cases is take a cell which is uninfected and from that cell we produce an embryo. And that embryo can be preserved for the future and we convert that embryo into a seed and that can grow into a mature plant in the future. This is the idea behind somatic embryogenesis where a somatic cell give rise to a plant. Now in this case, how it is possible? You know, in plant cells, we know plant cells are totipotent in nature, the healthy plant cells. That means if you supply constant nutrient source and if you put them in their natural in environmental conditions, you maintain all the environmental conditions properly. In those cases, you will see that the plant will grow, right? And that one single cell that you take, that will grow and divide and eventually it will produce the whole plant. And that is known as the totipotency of the plant cells. So we can export that idea. We take that one cell, that somatic cell, and we convert that cell. We, we provide all the inducers for that cell to become an embryo. Okay? We add all sorts of nutrients, all sorts of hormones and growth regulators, which will influence this somatic cell to become and behave like an embryo. Right? Though the embryo of somatic cell will not be the same type the embryo produced by the zygotic cells because the embryo in case of plants uh, which is produced by the zygotic cells or the gamete cells those embryo 
that is uh, much more constructed, much more well constructed actually, and that is filled with all the type of me membranes outside, seed coats and stuff, all right, Endos uh, endosperm, seed coat and stuff. While the somatic cells don't, or somatic embryos don't have any seed coats or endosperm and in, in something like that. Okay, so they have heaven heaven difference in structure, but the functionality can be retained. That means the idea of developing the plant can be retained. So we can get a fully mature plant from the somatic em embryo, just like the uh, zygote or gametic embryo. Okay, so what we do in this case, we take a somatic cell and we induce this cell. Okay, the first stage is known as induction. We do some sort of induction. So due to this induction, the cell will differentiate, that, that somatic cell will get certain factors, we provide many important factors, I'm going to talk uh, about the factors later. But once you induce that, the cell will start mature or maturation. This is the second stage, maturation. After the maturation, development of embryo. These are the three. These are the three different major stages of somatic embryogenesis. Induction, maturation and development of embryo. Okay. Once the embryo is developed, it will develop into a plant. Right. And we can do so many things with that. Now the thing is how we induce the somatic cell uh, to. Actually, you know, in plant cells, we don't need so much of inducers. We need some proper nutrient sources. We need some growth regulators or hormones like auxin, zibarelin, cytokinin like this and if you put them you'll start grow now in this case what we require we require auxin a lot okay auxin plays a very important role at the very early stage of somatic embryogenesis when you put auxin in this uh, so the cell will start grow and dividing start growing and dividing a lot very fast division is occurring and after some time we stop providing them auxin right and then we start providing them zibarelin okay because it's found out that if we continuously provide them auxin after time, it will not help the plant to grow and it will actually have a negative effect for that. So there's a stretch of time where we need to put auxin at the very early phase. Then we stop auxin, we put zibarelic acid in very less amount and then the cell will grow and differentiate. Ultimately, they will be differentiated into a mass of cell and that mass of cell is known as a callus right callus are undifferentiated mass of cells you don't find any sorts of uh, any sorts of similarity between callus it's just this bulk of cells in, in any kind of orientation or organization after this induction phase is done then once the callus is formed callus has the ability to grow into a mature plant and we take the callus we place it you know uh, we place them in the different nutrient jars right and once every situation is accomplished and established, then we take that mass of cells and again transfer to the new, newly nutrient filled jar so that the nutrient source keep on growing and keep on providing, right? Because the nutrients will support the growth of the plant. So you put them and that cell will start maturing there, okay? The, the differentiated cells will start maturing and they will start making the sorts of embryo that we are talking about. So they will be converted into a specific kind of structure, okay? And that specific structure or mass of cells that we got here have the capability of development into a adult cell, okay? So after this thing is done, if we allow, after the maturation, maturation means those cells will mature into a callus, as I've told you. Callus is where we find the maturation is complete. But after this thing is done, the development of embryo will be achieved. The development of embryo have several different stages. The stages called just like the normal zygotic embryogenesis, the stages starts with the globular phase. So a chunk of cell or callus, let's say. From the callus, it will start producing what we know as a what's this one? Let's say globular. Globular phase. Of cells then the cells start dividing and they find a stage called heart shaped stage of the embryo development then this heart stage converted again these are the mass of cells they're differentiating and forming different structures then they'll start forming what we know as a torpedo shape okay torpedo shape then finally the torpedo shape will move and they will form what we know as a 
start of plant development sort of at the earlier very early stage of it looks like a plant at the very end so these are the development of embryo different stages of the development starts with the callus once the maturation of the embryo is done after that it will start growing and going to the globular phase then heart shape then torpedo then finally the small plant shape so ultimately then they will grow to the plant so these are the different stage now what we can do we can fuse it in any of these stages we can we can uh, pause them now how we just take them and we can convert them into artificial seed because if you want to use them in future we can preserve this sort of embryo in a coating it's a kind of calcium salt uh, coated embryo because those calcium coated will help them to preserve all the moisture content inside and also to stay for a long period okay if you want to use them or if you want to use them then and then uh, then this is the possible stages and it will give us the plant these are the different stages of somatic cell embryogenesis now somatic cell embryogenesis also have two different types we can call one is known as direct one is known as indirect the direct type of somatic embryogenesis means it will go for the stage like somatic cells induction right after the induction it will give us the different phases like globular heart torpedo and finally the plant itself so it will not involve the production of callus right and uh, the examples are very less though but it will not involve in the production of callus while the indirect one involves the production of callus and most of the type of somatic embryos that we know of are of this indirect type which will produce a, a undifferentiated mass of cells or callus at the first then the callus will grow and divide into the mature embryo okay so these are the idea direct type indirect type the direct type of embryogenesis somatic embryogenesis example is if you take peanut and grow them it's a direct type okay now indirect type there are plenty of examples asparagus is an example for coffee leaf if you take the cell from the leaf this this twin somatic cell from the leaf for a coffee plant you will see uh, the indirect type or callus formation then all the stages of embryogenesis in there okay so what are the advantages and disadvantages of somatic embryogenesis somatic embryogenesis is advantages in certain cases where a plant is infected or some problems to grow it also helps us to produce artificial seeds which can rapidly grow once we put them into the into the uh, natural condition it's also important for certain types of plant species which we cannot reproduce them naturally it's, it's kind of difficult to reproduce them naturally we can do that using somatic embryogenesis so these are the major advantages of somatic embryogenesis and also we can go for uh, and use this somatic embryogenesis process and we can produce what we know as uh, anther culture and we can produce haploid plant species haploid plant species are very very important for many different experimental purposes right so these are the advantages now the disadvantage of somatic embryogenesis the disadvantage however is that this process is limited for some plant species only it's not like widely spread like the other plant tissue culture processes and also it's it, it takes uh, some more time and it requires expertise to do that you know uh, the people who used to farm uh, not everyone capable of doing somatic embryogenesis it's not possible for many plants also so these are the disadvantages of somatic embryogenesis so except for that the rest of the things are fine and that's how we do somatic embryogenesis so if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel the button is here to get more and more videos like that and obviously share this video with your friends thank you